So this is part two of making this looping animation in Blender. It's really satisfying. It's this little merry-go-round thing where the balls kind of just keep falling. So if you haven't already seen part one where we do the modeling and animation, make sure to go check it out on my channel. But this is where we're gonna be doing the lighting and materials. This is part two, so let's get into it. So first of all, you're gonna to wanna to go into the description below. I'll have a link to this Polyhaven texture. It's completely free. We need to download the folder here, the zip folder. It just has a blend file inside and you can append from that blend file. So just download the file and then this one as well. It's just the square concrete pavers. You can download that. Once again, it's just gonna be a zip folder. You unzip it, inside of there's a blend file. You don't have to take the blend file out. We just wanna, you just wanna know where that is on your computer so we can append the material in and it's already set up for us, which is the nice thing. So let's go into our scene from part one. And we're gonna go file and we're gonna go append. Now I already know where I have mine extracted. I have those two somewhere in my computer. So it's the plywood file. So once you've extracted this zip file, so that's this here, that's what's inside of it. So you're gonna click on the dot blend. You're gonna to go to the material and then click on plywood and go append. And then do the exact same thing to the other material. You're gonna go file, append, and you know where you put it on your computer. So I know where I have mine, that's square concrete pavers. Square concrete pavers, I'm gonna click on a blend file, go to material and then click on it here, and then go append. Now they're in here. Now let's just select our background here, tab into edit mode, and let's go to our materials properties here. Go plus, come to the drop down, and then get that plywood, and then assign it. And by default, it'll actually be assigned to everything. But you're gonna go into our UV editing, and you're gonna go U and unwrap, and then just grab all of this and go S to scale it. And then over here you can go Z and you can go material preview and you can see what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna come over here and rotate it actually, just so I feel like it lines up better. So that's looking really good. And that is loopable or seamless. So you don't have to worry about like cuts and things like that. Then let's go to our tab here. Let's go plus, come to the drop down and get that square concrete pavers. And what we're gonna do is just select these bottom steps over here and then click on a square concrete pavers and go assign like so and you can come over here with just these two and go s to scale them and change them accordingly how you feel but i'm gonna go something like that and tab back out now you're probably wondering how are these not blue and the original one i showed you was well you're going to go to your shading workspace and if the square concrete pavers selected what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to the base color shift a search and type in color ramp and then place it over here between the base color and the principal shader. And then you're gonna drag this value over here up a little bit, and you're gonna make it kind of like a darker kind of blue. Grab this top one and bring it in closer, and make this one kind of just a bluish color like this. Not too saturated, but not too dark either. And now if you go Z and you get rendered, you should see this. But obviously you wanna to go to our render settings, let's make it cycles under our device make a GPU and then under the render samples let's make it 50 or something like that now we can go back to our layout and let's go shift a let's add in an area light to move it over to the side let's give that a strength of 590 and then let's just grow it by going s to scale now if we go z and we go rendered we can see this but let's just go shift d to duplicate this light Let's have it coming in over here, maybe coming from the top as well a little bit. Okay, something like that. And in our camera view, this is what we should see. I'm just gonna go Control B, drag over the camera to limit the render. And then we can go to our world properties and you can go here to the color and then give it a sky texture and then set the strength to something like 0.4. But for me, I'm just gonna use a HDRI, so I'm gonna get one that I have on my computer, but this is optional. You guys can just stick to the sky texture if you want. So I've got one that I like. I'm gonna grab that and adjust it. Okay, so now we have lighting established. Let's grab the actual Ferris wheel thing. Let's go to our materials here, go new, and this is called plastic. Let's go to the base color. I'm gonna make mine kind of like a nice green. I'm gonna bring down the roughness a bit and I'm gonna go down here to the clear coat here and bring that up to about halfway. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, 
we can see that's what we have. Let's grab these glass panels, go new, giving them a principle. This is called glass. And let's come down here to the transmission, bring it all the way up to one, and then bring down this roughness down to 0 0.04. Now if we go Z and we go rendered, we should see this. And also just make the base color lighter. There we go, that's looking good. Now we just want to grab all of these balls. So holding in shift, just select all of them. Okay, I'm going to come over here. I'm just holding in shift, just selecting all of these spheres. Till I get to the last active sphere, I'm going to go new and call it balls. And I'm just going to give it a base color that's kind of blue. Make it metallic and then bring down the roughness. And then go control L and then just link that material for all of them. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we should see that. So just make sure all of them have that ball material. Okay, and then just grab the rest of the parts and give them a material. And just kind of make it like a brassy color, make it metallic, and bring down the roughness a bit. And then you can kind of give everything else in the scene that same material until you like what you've got. And at this point, we can also go to our render settings. Let's just give this motion blur under the settings here. Make sure to save. And one thing that you can do, it's optional, but you can append in some models. So I already have a plant model laying around that I like to use, but you guys can get whatever ones you want off the internet. There's a lot of free assets out there, but I always like adding in plants. So I'm gonna just optionally go ahead and add one in. And if you did find a plant on the internet or make your own, a good place to put it is somewhere kind of like down here. This is a little bit of a visual interest you know, something like this. This is completely optional, but I always like adding that in. Okay, that's looking really cool. Okay, so let's now go render and render image. And now we have an image here rendered. Let's close this and go to our compositing. Let's go use nodes. And then I'm just using my node wrangler to add a viewer node over here. And then adding these two together. So what we're gonna do here is from our image output here, we're gonna go shift a search and get a lens distortion, place it over here. Let's make it 0 0.02 and 0 0.017 at the dispersion. And let's come and click on fit. And now we have this nice kind of effect here. It just makes it look a little bit cooler, a little bit more realistic. So that's pretty much it. So let's go back to our layout, make sure to save. And now you can go to your output settings. You can select the destination on your computer and then you can change it to whatever format you want. I'm gonna go with FFmpeg video. Under the encoding, you can make it an MP4. And then you just go render and render out the animation. And it shouldn't take too long because this is a pretty efficient scene. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I will be uploading my original to Patreon. All of that will be in the description and it also helps support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.